when we are moved from the puberty and dysmenorrhea and excessive bleeding, next comes the 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 disease of this decade that is the PCOS. You ask any girl on the road, out of 10, one has PCOS. Okay, this is that common. That means right now if there are 30 people watching, three of you have PCOS. Right now there are 40 people, minimum four of you have PCOS. Are you understanding? It is that common. So what are we doing about this? And there is no treatment, especially in allopathy for PCOS. They can put you on hormones and help to regulate your menses, but the hormones come with side effects. So what to do and why do this happen? So I'll tell you what is happening So what is PCOS? You know, it's like a big monster disease that's happening and everybody's like PCOS, PCOS, and there's cyst in your ovaries and everybody's panicking, relax. What happens in your ovary, every period, there is one cyst. Can you see in the picture on the screen? So every minute, so there is one cyst that matures and gives an ovum. In polycystic, at one time, multiple cysts get developed. So the ovary looks bulky, it looks big, and it has multiple cysts. So that's why it's a polycystic ovarian disease or syndrome. Okay, so your ovary is bulky, it has a beaded pearl necklace appearance. And the problem is none of them are rupturing. So they are multiple are stimulated, but none of them is rupturing. So there is no proper ovulation, and that's why delayed menses. So, what are the factors that trigger this? Just like in case of early puberty, we saw obesity. Another factor in PCOS is obesity, and especially the truncal obesity or the obesity on your abdomen. Now, ladies out there, you have to be careful. There should not be a lot of fat on a lower tummy because these fat can cause PCOS eventually and it can uh, disrupt your normal hormonal cycle. So obesity one trigger if you have a strong family history of PCOS you tend to get PCOS okay a lot of uh, irregular eating habit junk food which eventually leads to obesity is again a cause. So it goes like this so once you have PCOS that is a ovary which multiple cysts your insulin resistance gets affected that means uh, your body is not burning the fat and which again causes hormonal problem and it's like a cycle so if you are fat you get pcos and if you are pcos you become more fatter so it goes hand in hand so people who have pcos it is very difficult for them to burn the fat because there is hormonal imbalance and no matter how much they exercise it becomes very difficult to burn the cages but the best part if you could burn those few cages when you have pcod there will be exponential improvement in your ovarian function so few reduction of one or two or three cages also your ovaries function will be multiple triple times so it is very important to lose weight especially in pcos okay so what are the common symptoms one, delayed menses. This is the most common thing. You don't get menses start. When it starts, it's like 40 days and becomes 50 days and 60 days. So very delayed and irregular menses. Acne. So acne, usually you expect at puberty, but imagine you're 22 or 25 and suddenly you started getting acne, lot of pimples. You should think, is it PCOS? Second, lot of facial hair growth another sign of PCOS, obesity and black discoloration around the neck. You tend to also lose hair. And why is this important? Because it eventually leads to no period, means eventually leads to delayed conception and infertility. So how to diagnose a PCOD? Just because you have cysts doesn't mean you have PCOD. Just because you don't have cysts, doesn't mean you don't have PCOD. So out of three, you should have two criteria. One, you should, if you have infrequent or no ovulation, that is delayed periods, that is first criteria, you have PCOD. 
second, if you have the symptoms like the acne or the facial hair, that is another sign that you have. Or if you do a hormonal test, your blood levels of all the male hormones, the testosterone will go higher, the androgens will be more, that is another hint. And third, on the ultrasonography, if your ovary shows a polycystic appearance, so out of three, if there are two present. So for example, the first two are present. If the third is not there, it, it still means that you have PCOS. So once you have PCOS, what to do about it? First, see your doctor, get it diagnosed. And now the thing is you have to start working on it. How do we do that? How do we do that? So the so solution, what I have seen many 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 doctors are advising is intermittent fasting that means you have to keep a long fasting between your meals people right now the the nutritionists are usually especially for pcos patients i'm talking here they are advising two meals a day maximum three meals a day so more the gap between your meals your insulin level goes down and your fat will be burnt faster so Early dinners, as soon, like around seven, and late breakfast. So, or even two meals a day is very good. Second, what you should not have is high sugary food because sudden there's increased surge of glucose in your blood. This is not advisable in PCOS. So, cut down your donuts, cut down your pastries, cut down your sweets. I'm sorry. This is not a very good thing what I'm saying, but if you want to get healthy, if you want to reduce your weight, this is important because it is going to get tougher. Normally, you know, it's tougher, but it, in PCOS, it's going to be triple tougher to reduce. So please cut down all the sugars. They also say milk because nowadays milk might have a lot of impurities in one way and in second way where you inject a cow with the hormone and the hormone goes through milk in you not advisable so cut down your dairy again in pcos especially i'm talking about pcos not all the diseases here so cut down the dairy cut down the sugar and cut down high carbohydrate diet more protein in your diet will be good especially and long gap between your meals no snacking in between please no snacking in between, long gap between your meals. Okay, so some foods which suddenly built your, put a lot of sugar in your blood could be chips, biscuits, cakes, ice creams, dates, you know, mangoes, all this thing, watermelon, cut, cut, cut. You can go for vegetables, uh, whole wheat pasta, whole grains, oats, these are good.